This video is brought to you by Ground News. Rishi Sunak has not exactly been having the best start as Prime Minister. Since taking over from Liz Truss, his poll numbers have tanked. Numerous by-elections have undermined his authority as leader, and very few of his five pledges now seem achievable, undermining his credentials as a competent legislator. Last week, though, it became clear that things might be getting even worse. One of Sunak's main jobs before the 2024 general election is to try and get the Tories out of their polling slump and ensure that he does not oversee the complete destruction of his party. To do this, he requires cold hard cash to spend on campaigning. Usually, the Tories' wealthy backers ensure that this isn't too much of a problem. However, the Electoral Commission released financial data last week on the UK's political parties. And, well, the Tories look to be in a spot of trouble. So, in this video, let's have a look at the finances of the main parties, what changed in 2022, and what this means going forward. Now, before we dig into the finances of the main parties, let's start by looking at why this is important. Here in the UK, all main political parties are subject to pretty strict campaign finance rules. There are two kinds of spending limits, one for candidates and one for parties. The candidate limit depends on how many voters are in a given constituency. The more voters, the higher the limit. The party limit relates to any spending used to promote the party generally, rather than promoting a specific candidate. In 2019, on average, the limit was about £30,000 per constituency. If a party fielded a candidate in all 650 constituencies, this limit would be about £19.5 million. Now, this is just for general elections. Major parties like the Conservatives, Labour and the Lib Dems all contest other types of elections too, such as by-elections, local elections, mayoral elections, police and crime commissioner elections and regional elections, such as the Scottish Parliament. Each of these elections also have their own limits too. The point is that while campaign limits do stop UK elections costing the billions that they do in the US, the main parties still need to raise capital in order to contest the elections and stand a chance of winning. So let's move over and have a look at how much money the main parties did raise in 2022. Let's start with income. Last year, the Labour Party increased their revenue from £45 million in 2021 to over £47 million in 2022. Interestingly, Labour's membership actually declined in 2022, dropping to around 400,000. This is significantly down from the 2017 peak of about 575,000 in July 2017. It's also down from 2021, when the party had 432,000 members. This is accounted for in the party's finances, which records a decline in their income from party memberships. In 2021, the Labour Party received about £16.2 million from membership fees. In 2022, this had declined to about £16 million. It's not the sharpest decline, but it does indicate that the decline of hardcore fans is having at least some impact on finances. This decline in membership fees was offset, though, by an increase in donations. In 2021, the party collected £9.9 .9 million in donations. This increased to about £10.5 million in 2022. Similarly, they raised about £400,000 more in commercial activity. A large part of this came from an increase in revenue from dinners, presumably because fewer dinners were able to take place in 2021 as a result of Covid restrictions. As we explained, this all means that Labour increased their revenue by about £2 million from 2021. Their expenditure costs were about £6 million lower in 2022 than 2021, meaning that they ended the year with a surplus of about £2.7 million. The picture for the Tories, though, isn't quite the same. Firstly, let's have a look at the impact of the change in their membership. Unfortunately, figures on their membership aren't easy to come by and aren't published regularly or reliably. However, it does seem that their membership declined slightly in the last few years. This is backed up by the fact that, in 2022, the revenue from their membership fees also declined slightly from 2021, from £1.99 million to £1.97 million. This decline isn't all that steep, and shows that even through the chaos of last year, the Tories managed to remain their core membership, 
although this membership is significantly lower than Labour's. More worryingly for the Tories, though, is that their revenue from donations declined significantly. In 2021, they received about £20.5 million from donations, whereas last year, this had declined to £18.1 million. This is a massive £2.4 million decline in donation revenue. This problem is confounded by the fact that the Tories received less money last year from legacies, which basically means wills. In 2021, they received about £1.3 million from this. Last year, this had more than halved to only £514,000. All in all, this means that their total income had declined by roughly £1 million from 2021 to 2022, going from about £31.8 million to £30.7 million. Their expenditure, though, had increased from £31.3 million to £32.7 million. All in all, this means that the Conservatives ended the year on a loss of £2.3 million. In the opening statement of this document, the Conservative Treasurer said that the party had navigated a turbulent 2022 and that 2022 was expected to be financially challenging, with the first half of the year directly impacted by lifting Covid restrictions. These challenges coincided with the resignation of two Prime Ministers and therefore party leaders, which required additional unplanned activity. So, all in all, Labour had a higher income by more than £10 million, increased this income by more than the Tories, and actually ended the year in the black. Considering the fact that Labour rely more on trade unions and individual donations, whereas the Tories rely more on wealthy backers, it's fair to have assumed that the Tories should probably be in a better financial position. What makes this even worse for the Tories is the fact that the next general election is expected to happen next year, and they're trailing Labour by more than 20 points in the polls. General elections are already not cheap. The Tories spent £19 million on their 2019 election, and ending last year on a loss really isn't a good start. Nonetheless, we'll have to wait and see over the next year whether Sunak is able to recover the lost donations and get the party's finances back in a position to be able to contest a general election. So you might want to keep up with stories like this and see how both the Tories and Labour are doing in the news. And the best way to do that is with Ground News, a website and app designed to help you take the power of the media into your own hands. Here's how it works. Every day, Ground News ingests over 50,000 articles from all over the world. They then organise these articles by story. For each and every story, you can see the number of reporting sources, where these sources lean on the political spectrum at an individual level and group level, compare the headlines of each source, and read each article all without ever leaving the app. For example, take this story about the Niger Junta authorising Burkina Faso and Mali to intervene in case of attack. Ground shows us that 15 outlets are reporting on it, with us able to examine their bias and find that 53% of those lean left. You can then swipe through some headlines, comparing how different outlets cover it. Ground News is such a useful tool for our current media landscape, and I think an app like this will only become more essential as the media landscape continues to evolve. Now, our team at TLDR likes Ground News so much that we decided to offer a 30% discount on the Ground News Vantage plan to all our viewers. And that includes access to a feature called My News Bias, which is basically a dashboard for your news diet. Sign up to find out how your reading habits change over the next week. What are your top sources? Are you engaging with diverse perspectives? What about your favourite topics? Find out with Ground News Vantage, which is 30% off only using our link. So make sure you go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link in the description to get started and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.